What up, everybody? What up, everybody? Let me get to the spot. Let me get to the spot. Oh, all right. Welcome. I'm back. This is Playing Your Greatness, and I am your gracious host, Carlton Hamilton. Let's get right into it today. All right. Did a little weigh-in, and I'm hovering right around 245. I'm creeping out now. See, I'm staying steady at that. Now I was I was hanging around 250. Now I'm right around 245. So I'm hanging in there, been fasting, not been eating a lot, but I've still been working out, feeling good with energy. Um, so I'm making making a move. All right, so let's get right into this video. This, this particular video is kind of an extension of another video I did. And it was titled, and you can go back and look at it, it was titled, Are You a Caterpillar or a Butterfly? And I did that, and I remember doing it from my office. Now, some of you, if you don't know the story, there's a story out there, and, and it's, it's, told in, it's, it's told in several different ways. But the way that I, that I read it and I interpreted it was, there was a kid, he found a, butter, he found a caterpillar, took it home, made a little makeshift area for the caterpillar to live in his house. Branches, grass, all the other stuff. Um, and so, out over time, the kid would come home and just mess with the, the caterpillar, but he started noticing the caterpillar was beginning um, the process of making this cocoon so he could become a butterfly. So he asked his mom, oh my God, what's going on, this thing? And his mom explains it to him. Hey, this caterpillar is about to become a butterfly. So the kid is watching every day, and I don't know how long this process takes, but the kid is watching this process. At one point, at, at, at the crucial point, the kid sees the, a little hole in the uh, cocoon, and he sees the butterfly or the caterpillar squeezing its way out and he sees that it looks it's it looks you know has the shape and you know stuff of like the beginnings that he can see of a butterfly and so the kid is just watching just watching and he's becoming impatient because he's thinking oh my goodness this thing is going through hell so the kid goes and gets some scissors and cuts a bigger hole into the cocoon uh, butterfly falls out, but it's it's incomplete. Body is bloated. The um, the butterfly wings are not developed, and so the kid picks it up and puts it back into its little area. And after a few days, the butter the butterfly dies. And the kid goes to his mom and says, "You know why is this? Why did the butterfly die?" And his mom has to explain to him. Um, that the butterfly needs that struggling, painful process to turn himself into a butterfly from a caterpillar. So the kid really doesn't understand the story, but I know you understand it right now. And what, what parable I'm using or what parallel I'm using is that sometimes we go through struggles and we sure wish we could avoid them and have the choice. But caterpillars to butterflies don't have that choice. But we as humans, we do have that choice. We have what it's, what it's called. I heard somebody refer to it the other day as the dignity of choice, which is, in other words, it's free will. And I, and I believe this. I, I, I saw something the other day and I came up with this, this saying. I said human beings are the only uh, species on this planet that I know of, living life form, that... We have this choice, and when given that choice, we do not choose our greatness. We make other choices somewhere in that range. Now think about that. Butterflies don't have that choice, and I'm sure that there's other examples of animals or species or life forms that make this transformation that they don't have a choice. They just know that is their process. We as humans, we are the greatest living species on this planet but yet we're given this choice and we don't choose to become our best now i find that absolutely fascinating but i find that sad at the same time 
because I'm here because I did that same thing. I had the choice and I chose a, a, a sideways route. And so I had to come all the way back around to where I'm at now. But here's, here's what's, what's interesting about that as well. We're given the choice to be, our, to be great. We choose a range of things in there from being not so great to being just an absolute hot mess. Okay? And when other people, humans, try to check somebody or make some constructive criticism or just 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 blatantly just just straight, just like, you know what, man, you messing up. You need to do better. This is what happens in, in, in real life, is we have what I call the mediocre police. We got these people to come in here and go, leave that person alone. It's their free choice and it's their free will. Absolutely correct. But also at the same time, why do we have such, um, we find it so easy to allow people to be pieces of shit. Follow me on this. Why do we find it so easy to allow people to be nothing? You see what I'm saying? But when we try to challenge them to be their best, we get we get a backlash. That's absolutely ass backwards to me. We should be collectively trying to help everybody be their best. We should not be allowing people. Nope, that's unacceptable. Nope. I know what you could be at your best, but we continue. People will argue with me. People are going to argue in, in, the, in the, the comment section below is you don't tell somebody what they want to be. I'm going, okay, we got homeless people with signs in front of stores, pushing baskets all over the place. You mean to tell me that that person wanted to be there? Of course not. So why aren't we collectively trying to throw a water bottle out there? That's not, that's not helping them. Okay, I mean that that's a whole nother video as far as how do we then stop that process that's begin years ago because it's not some snap judgment. You know, your wife didn't leave you or whatever, and just you know we make it seem like it's some microwave something. That, hold on a just a second. Okay, I forgot to turn off the AC here in the office. I always do that just because it, it makes a bad sound in, in the background, just that humming. Um, it's going to go off in a second. But I, I, I disagree with that. I think we should be challenging everyone to be their best. And, 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 and that's not going to come to fruition because right now we have too many people that believe so much in independence that we allow people to independently just, just do all kind of nonsense, crazy stuff. All right. Now... Here's what's interesting about that, that we got this mediocre police that comes in and it allows people to stay uneducated, it allows people to stay unskilled, it allows people to fight for their limitation, it allows people to procrastinate. Now let me ask, let me ask you a question, okay? If I told you that I was going to be standing outside my house at 3 a.m. in the morning with a million dollars, and if you could come get that, I'm going to be there for one minute. Right at 3 a.m. at 3.01, I'm leaving. So then you don't get the opportunity. Would you be there? Of course you would. Of course you would. Now, here, here's, here's, here's the deal. That's a one-off. That's easy. To be somewhere one day does not, and in most cases, it's not going to take all your energy. It ain't going to take all your money. Okay? You, I don't care where you are in the world. You would scrape up the money to be here by 3 a.m. to get that money. Now, what if I told you, all right, if you want that million dollars, not only do you need to be here at 3 a.m., you need to be here at 3 a.m. for the next two years, consecutive, every day, three years. Now, immediately, people, automatically, you, you go on the video, you're like, ooh, man, I don't, I don't know about that. You know, you have... You have no plans on moving or anything, but see that this is where it comes in. We'll make up reasons we'll, because it's, it's a choice. You say I could do it once, but what if I got to do it multiple times? See the challenge in that? Okay. Now, 
I also found out something. I came across this stat. I thought it was 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 pretty crazy, because when I give that example of the being somewhere at three a.m., I I know it automatically shocks people because they'll go, "Yep, I'll do it once," but ooh, I, I don't know. For a million dollars, I'll figure it out. I'll figure out how to be there for two consecutive years. I could get up at three a.m. and then I can go do whatever else I want to do for two consecutive years. I could do that. All right. Now. Reason why I bring that up is because reason why people are so easy to back off of that is because they don't believe they do not believe um, that they could do something that is going to result in them being their best selves. So since they don't believe that they can do it, they're not going to take action. All right. And because they're not going to take action, you are going to create this this circular motion of of life. Because if you don't believe anything, if you don't believe you can have what you have, you're not going to take action. Therefore, you are going to just be doing the same thing or in some range of the sameness every single day. All right. And so I came across this stat, which talks about just the sameness. It said that 50 percent of people still live in their same hometowns. Now, I thought that was fascinating. I mean, we're filming. I'm filming this from. Uh, a city right outside of Phoenix called Tempe, Arizona. I used to come out to this area during uh, my baseball career for spring training. Then I ended up going back to school, Arizona State University, and staying in the area. I still have a connection, you know, to, to my hometown, Chicago Heights. Shout out to Chicago Heights. Shout out to Beacon Hill. I still have a connection to that area, and I go back every now and then. But if, when I go back, I still see some of the same people, even my brothers and sisters. But I think about that as far as what are your expectations? Because if you're not moving, if jobs aren't coming into that area, you're going to eventually be a, you're going to have to start maybe looking around. So if jobs aren't coming in the area as far as technology and all those things that you need to take advantage of by being kind of mobile in your mindset, then you're going to be stuck. You're going to get passed over and your views of the world are still going to be very small. Racist ideas, not saying like black, white racing, but just very narrow mindedness. All right. Now, Mark Twain has a quote. Now, I got it written down right here. OK, Mark Twain has a quote. He says, travel is fatal to prejudice, bigotry and narrow mindedness. And many of our people need it sorely on these accounts. Broad, wholesome, charitable views of men and things cannot be acquired by vegetating in one's corner of the earth all one's lifetime. Martin Luther King said something very similar to that, but that quote just kind of sums it up. If you don't see yourself as mobile in your mind, 50% of the people are staying in the same place. And how can you really be expansive? Now, again, don't, don't, don't. Okay. There are people who still live in their hometown, but has, have a passport. They've traveled to multiple states. They've had multiple experiences. They've seen all kinds of different things. They come back and they share. Very much like Allegory of the Cave. Now, it's a Plato, another thing. I'm just jumping around a little bit. But understand that, that if you are still in your same place, how expansive of your mind, not just watching YouTube videos or stuff like that, actually getting out and going, physically seeing, touching uh, the world, you know, or <clears throat> excuse me. All right. Now, what that does is it, 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 it reminds me of a, another quote that I that I've come up with. And that is I said, your life will move in the direction of your thoughts. Now, think of all the stuff that I said before. If you're in that same circular sameness every day, same town, same people, same stores. Now I go back to my era and I see how it has changed. But realistically, from the from the from a core level, it is still the same. My neighborhood is still the same. So there really isn't much that's really expanding. Kids are growing up. They're, they're the kids of the neighborhood. So your life will move in the direction of your thoughts. So like I said, if you are living in that sameness of the neighborhood that you've been in, how expansive do you think your mind is? All right. Now, what that also brings me to is I'm in the motivational space. I'm in the motivational self-help coaching leadership. I'm in that space. All right.
But what I've noticed within that space is outside of the very top end of the, the spectrum of the gurus that are talking in this space, a lot of people that are just jumping into it or just some of the just marginal speakers are speaking from a position of how much money do you how much money do you want? Uh, how much uh, material things do you want to live a big house or a car and thing? I said it's very easy to then, you know, bring people in when you start talking about things you can count. All right. So the understanding is that is correct. You do want to be able to be uh, as wealthy as you can. Why? Even though that's the draw of uh, most of the most of the people that are um, just getting into this arena. All right. But see, here's here's the thing with that. As I believe that if you want to be comfortable. You need to be rich. Okay, think, think about it. Okay, if I want to be able to give more to my church, if I attend church, you need to be making more money so that you can give more. If you want to be able to share experiences with people, you don't want to do it from some video you watch. You want to be able to go to Africa or Australia or Europe or, you know, the Far East China or South America, the Galapagos Islands. You want to be able to go physically put feet on that soil and then come back with a story. And the only way that you're going to be able to do that is making more money. Nobody's going to give you these opportunities because if somebody actually gives you the opportunity, you need to have time. And in order to have that time, you need to be literally your own boss or in some way um, making enough money where you can take that time. So. That, that's what I feel is important because I understand that there is no honor. And I, and I argue with people about this all the time. There is no honor. There is no advantage to being poor, being in a place of poverty, medi just me mediocrity, just being average. Okay. Or being what I hear people talk about now. Well, I'm, I'm a minimalist. And I go that that's ridiculous. The only people that really have the right place to say, um, I'm a minimalist is somebody who has had everything and realizes that they don't need everything and they scale down to just the bare minimum what they have. Because if you've never been that, you don't know what the bare minimum is. You just know you barely got stuff because the people that I know of that are talking about, well, I'm a minimalist. I'm a, I said, you broke as hell. And that to me is what I what I wrote down. I said, all those are just excuses okay, that we all tell ourselves to satisfy ourselves when we do not want to be our best. That's what I have found out in my lifetime. Anybody who is striving to just be mediocre or just barely have enough, you are lying to yourself because you do not want to be a butterfly. Pretty simple. All right. Because the best don't make excuses. All right. So I'm going to close this out with this, with this challenge. All right. First of all, Ask yourself three questions. What do you want? Why do you want them? And the last one is, can you see in your mind's eye what it is that you want to come to fruition? Can you see that? Now, once you start on that journey, what I want you to do is that, because I know once you declare what you want, why you want it, and can you see it in your mind, you're going to hit some obstacles. Without a doubt, there is nobody that has become successful without having some pitfalls and obstacles and things that they have that they have overcome. So my challenge to you is try to see that obstacle and see yourself getting through it. Predict where it's going where, where the first obstacle is going to come and then just say to yourself, you're going to get through it. You're going to you're going to face the struggle like the caterpillar does because you know on the other side you're going to be a butterfly. All right, this is plan your greatness and I'm going to say this again. Plan your greatness. You know why? Because no one else will. See y'all next time.